but it demonstrates that a major power, when it believes its vital interests are involved, will, will sacrifice any number of its own people. Now, on false flags, so when did you first discover that the Gulf of Tonkin was a fraudulent thing? Well, there were allegations at the time, but uh, doing the research for my book really brought this out into the open in a major way. And Senator Fulbright, who guided the War Powers Resolution as a result of the Gulf of Tonkin through the Senate for President Johnson, later accused the President of having misled him. Now, if he, if he was going to mislead one of his own most senior senators, he certainly wasn't going to hesitate about leading Prime Minister Harold Holt. And I was really interested when I heard your interview with uh, John Fain. Israel, years ago, during one of the wars, killed 30 or 40 Americans on a spy ship in the Western Mediterranean. That was a mistaken missile hit, if I remember correctly, or a well, strike, I can't remember. the Americans tried to cover it up. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a mistake, it was deliberate. You believe so? Yes. That's a massive claim to make. It is. It borders on the beliefs that some people have, which I've always thought were completely insane, about conspiracy theories like 9-11 and the like. Uh, I'd used the word deliberate, and John Fain thought this was really going overboard, that it couldn't mm. possibly have been deliberate. But I have no doubt in my own mind that the, US, the United States had decided that if it were proven that quite deliberately Israeli ships and aircraft had attacked USS Liberty, that it would not be possible to s sustain the unquestioning support for Israel mm -hmm. that um, America had provided. And uh, Dean Rusk, um, I think Jesse Helms, a number of others, Admiral Mora, who was a significant person mm -hmm. in the American Navy, I think in charge of the Mediterranean fleet at the time, and others have all said, in spite of the official inquiries saying it, you know, it was all an accident, they don't deny it happened, they say it was an accident, but 34 Americans were killed and over 70 wounded. Um, the senior people I've mentioned said no. It was no accident. Yeah, it was quite interesting because after that interview you had with on, on ABC, I got hooked into an email. I got an email forwarded to me by um, Joe Meadows, mm. who was actually on the boat, and he describes exactly what happened. So it was a really interesting thing. Well, Israeli surveillance aircraft were flying around mm. Liberty for some hours before an attack was launched. Mm. Now. They were presumably taking photographs. They were sending those photographs back to Israeli IDF headquarters, mm -hmm. working out whose the boat was, and they ended up by trying to say it was an Egyptian ship, which was much smaller and quite yeah. different. And I think the Israelis had good reason for wanting to stop the Americans listening in on what the High Command was determining in that 1967 war. You know, the 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 commander of the Mediterranean fleet had ordered fighters to be dispatched from the aircraft carrier to defend Liberty. Mm. But then you would have had American aircraft shooting down Israeli aircraft. And so what was a, a, a pending disaster for Israeli-American relations was getting worse and worse. Mm. McNamara must have been aware, he would have been alerted to the difficulty that Liberty was in because he'd been under attack and under surveillance for quite some time. And he was presumably in some command headquarters in the Pentagon or in the White House at the time. But as soon as he heard those aircraft had been dispatched, they, he ordered they be returned, not to defend liberty. And later it was said they were ordered to be returned because they were the wrong aircraft, they were ones who were nuclear armed. Now, that is just not credible. The whole incident had to be contained, and the only way you could possibly contain it was by having official inquiries saying that it was all accidental. But it demonstrates that a major power, when it believes its vital interests are involved, will, um, will, will sacrifice any number of its own people.
to preserve that vital interest. And that says something about the power. Can I ask you one or two things about 9-11? Yeah. Because in your book you said that America was, they were taken by surprise. And on the morning of 9-11, they had war games simulating exactly that. I think it was called Operation Vigilante or something. Building well, 7 I, I, as well. Look, it was, a, it was a total failure of American intelligence services. I, th I think the information was in the hands of the Americans that would have enabled them to work out what was going to be, was going to unfold, but it was never all in one place. Mm. It wasn't all brought together, and it's only afterwards that they recognise the significance of different bits of it. Um, have you heard of Building 7? No. Yeah, I must forward you a link of Building 7.